hello to everybody. Uh, uh, here we are going to, to speak about um, ritual medieval deposit in a, in a tumuli uh, in the northwest of Spain in, in Galicia. Okay, um, there is uh, only a limited tradition of studies of medieval pottery in Galicia, and these are predominated by typological uh, approach with few studies prior to the year uh, 2000. Also, the no medieval context. Uh, have mainly been excavated in urban areas, uh, their surrounding areas as part of preven uh, preventive archaeology projects. These contests are mainly domestic and funerary, while more recent studies uh, have explored the architecture of church and agrarian spaces. Another kind of site that has not been studied to date provides very interesting pottery. These sites appeared in the prehistoric and protohistoric periods and were re reused in medieval times in very different ways. These types of sites present uh, us a number of problems. The first problem is that the information from the medieval phases is a secondary, is in a secondary level. Normally, these sites are investigated because of their age, concentrating on the oldest phases. Uh, the second is that the medieval archaeological record has only begun to be systemat systematically uh, documented in the last few years. The third problem is that the presence of medieval activity is only mention mentioned briefly in the reports. In many cases, this information is only pasted uh, from mouth to mouth between archaeologists and is soon uh, lost. lost. Well, uh, despite these difficulties, uh, we find a certain variety of ways in which the oldest sites were used during the medieval period. We know about uh, hill forts. Uh, here you, have, you can see two of them, like Castrovite. On, on the left, uh, uh, Iron Age Hillfort Hill, uh, with a chapel on, on the top, or the other one on the on the right, uh, Santa Maria de Cervantes in in the province of Lugo, with uh, a church in a, over the over the the Hillfort. In this case, in, the, in this case, case I will see uh, it will it will seem that the church, as an ecclesiastical institution, attempted to appropriate a space that still had some kind some some kind of pagan religious significance for, for the rural com rural communities. Roman Roman sites are known that contain medieval religious structures, such as uh, the 10th century church built on, on the Roman encampment of Citadella. You have you have it here, the Roman encampment. And the church, the 10th century church, is here. And then on the top, uh, they made a, a, a new Romanesque, Romanesque uh, church over, over here. Uh, recent excavation work uh, has revealed medieval activity in prehistoric settlements. These are very complex sites uh, which very occupied, occupied for long periods of time. The medieval activity is normally de detected by chance for, from datings of uh, structures that were previously considered to be prehistoric. Another kind of uh, reuse, you have the Roman uh, lighthouse of Hercules in La Coruña, it's one of the oldest lighthouses in, in the world still in use, or the, uh, the castle of Torres do Este, it, it was built uh, in a hill fort and, uh, and two in a Roman uh, harbor. Well, megaliths uh, were also occupied during the medieval period. Curiously, Galician archaeologists have traditionally presumed that tumuli frequently contain medieval remains, but there are few publications that actually refer to this medieval activity. This is char characterized by the presence of pottery fragments. fragments. In the last few years, medieval activity has been documented in tumuli by radiocarbon in datin, including a hearth in the tumulus of Amamelas, for example, or a pit duck in, into a funerary complex dating from the 3rd millennium BC in which in, in Adevesa dos Torradoiros, uh, with identical characteristics to the prehistoric pits. Finally, at least 3,000 Galician tumuli were ransacked in modern times, leaving vain physical evidence, pottery fragments, and, so, and some wooden st structures. Concentrating, concentrating on the prehistoric tumuli, we believe that the reuse of these structures may have a functional and ritual purpose. In the first case, the medieval activity had an economic objective. The space was occupied sporadically and seasonally in order to control the surrounding territory, which was used as grazing land or as good land. The location of the tumuli or high points in the terrain provides, provided an advantageous look, look, lookout point. The associated archaeological remains include perishable structures or uh, isolated fragments of pottery, poorly preserved, widely dispersed and small in number. In the second equally viable case, the medieval activity uh, was the result of ritual practices. 
these structures uh, were used for votive deposits as they were pro prominent in this landscape and are usually associated with legends of legendary veins known as in Galicia like Mouros. During the medieval period, these spaces uh, lost their purely funerary significance, but continued to be deeply rooted in traditional cultures, culture. The specific uh, context of the pieces can help us to discover information about these types of rituals, which were possibly, uh, possibly associated with the continuation of an implicit paganism in the lifestyle of these rural communities. We believe that the tumuli of Rosa das Aveas provide a clear uh, example of a medieval ritual space, even though uh, they also had a functional purpose, and that the, and that the choice of the local localization in the landscape and the position of the items found uh, on site on the site in not purely by chance our aim is our aim is to, is to demonstrate that this deposit is ritual characterizing the pottery found on the site from a special contextual and formal perspective considering the its typology morphological technical features and decorative elements as well as from an analytical perspective by carrying out physical and chemical analysis the necropolis of Santa Marina in, of, Roza, of Roza das Aveas, containing around 30 tumuli, is located in an extensive uh, flood plain around an important, an important transit route that, cr that crosses the entire municipal district from north to southwest. Today, the necropolis still stands inside an industrial estate, and a series of excavations have, have been carried out in the, in the area, mainly focusing on the double tumulus. A total of four tumuli were excavated in this necropolis. One of them was built over a circular enclosure surrounded by a trench in which only three medieval pottery fragments were found. In the second tumulus of Rosa da Fora, no medieval uh, fragments were found. And finally, a double tumulus, uh, the subject of our study, where, where a large number of pottery fragments were found. The double tumulus is close to a natural transit route. The distance between them uh, is like uh, two or three meters, and they are oriented northwest southwest, giving the sensation of being a single unit as they visibly overlap each other on the horizon. Uh, when, when seen from all the, uh, of the angles that provide access to the two tumuli, this visual, visual effect seems to have been created deliberately, probably with the aim of intentionally demonstrating in the, that they belong it to the same construction as scheme or design. A number of, of periods of periods of reuse, uh, post-neolithic, were uh, documented from subsequent periods uh, throughout to modern times. Uh, during the process of construction and reuse, an, a number of different objects were deposited. In this case, we are interested in the medieval activity, uh, which is quite exceptional in the region. We have a, tot a total of 15 uh, medieval vessels uh, with similar features to other types of pottery from the early medieval age. The features uh, we will go on to, the, to describe date from between the 8th and the 11th century. These vessels are highly fragmented and have the characteristic of domestic where used to cook and serving food. They mainly consist of pots. Uh, there are also numerous vessels with handles such as bottles, pitchers and jars. This, uh, there are three types of clays uh, that have been identified. The pots uh, have all uh, th uh, three types of clays, while the other types are reddish in, in, color, in color. They were manufactured uh, using a wheel, and a modeling technique seen in the pottery made of black and orange clays, uh, together with handmade vessels using the red, reddish clays, clays. They also have a very regular finish on the outer, uh, outer so surface and a micaceous temper. Only four decorated vessels were found, with typically medieval designs limit limited uh, to straight vertical lines or co carpet uh, horizontal lines in incised or stamped using a punch. They are all made of red clays and there are no decorated pots. The most uh, outstanding aspect of this double neolithic tumulus is that the medieval pottery uh, is the most abundant and best structured type uh, in the site, despite the fact that in, it appeared in the surface level, uh, levels of, of the north of the tumulus over the natural soil, without any structures associated with the deposit. Initially, it was construed uh, as having been a rubbish dump, where fragments of pottery had become accumulated in a perimetral uh, part of the site. But after carrying out a formal and spatial analysis, it was found that it had features suggesting it had been deposited intentionally uh, in relation to the monuments. 
the choice of the location in the tumulus suggests a major change with regard to prehistoric uh, reuses of the site, on the side of the tumulus but outside of it. The, the pieces were preserved in a virtually completed condition and their fragmentation is a result of post-depositional post -depositional process. The distribution, the distribution of the pieces reveal a homogeneous collection that was deposited at a single moment, with a main concentration and some pieces that were subsequently scattered over the tumulus. As a result, uh, as a result, the medieval pieces are located in a specific context, in an, in an ancient double tumulus whose use and significance lasted for a long period of time, and which went far beyond uh, the original in intention of its builders. We decided to carry out an analysis of the clays used for the pottery in order to verify and this, uh, this, if this hypothesis was uh, supported or not by, by a, a more complete characterization of the pottery. A total of six pieces uh, that were representative of the clays and shapes were selected. One of the pieces uh, had decoration. Two types of analysis were carried out. X-ray uh, diffraction to, determ to determine the mineral mineralogy of the sample and X-ray fluorescence to quantify their chemical composition. The results are shown in the, show in the following tables. Uh, the, the main geochemical ge ge and mineralogical results are detailed below, focusing on different aspects of the pottery's uh, production. Amongst uh, the archaeometric results, we found that the vessels have a quartz uh, plagioclase min mineralogy and a current elemental uh, composition with a high content of silica, aluminium, and iron, and titanium, which is current with the elemental comp composition. The geochemical and mineralogical composition leads, uh, leads us to consider granitic sketch type clays. So uh, there are local uh, vessels. Uh, although Galician soils are consider, considered as granitic, there is a variety of raw, mat raw materials available in the surrounding area, where the following lithologies can be found. Uh, in like uh, quartz, um, uh, narrow bands of alkaline granites, uh, large patches of calc alkaline granites, uh, in order to facil facilitate the identification of the raw materials with the most likely sources, the result of the element comp composition of, of the pottery were compared with that of uh, several C. horizon samples in the different lithologies. Uh, the, the comparison, uh, excluding other uh, minerals that, that are more associated with the post depositional period, uh, a dendrogram was obtained, showing that two clear groups were formed and how the different sea horizons are grouped uh, with the different types of pottery. Whatever the case, all of the evidence we have uh, available uh, so far would seem to indicate that the raw materials were always extracted locally at different distances uh, ranging with, between in situ and a maximum of 12 kilometers. There be, therefore, we can cons consider that the collection of pottery was possibly manufactured by two different potters or pottery workshops. Plagioclase and, and quartz are the main materials used as temper in the clays. We do not have any ev evidence that would indicate that the uh, tempers were added intentionally. Uh, also, there may have been a prior selection of raw materials based on their suitability for the type of pottery to be made. As despite having a, a wide range of raw materials available in the surrounding area, the potters only uh, selected skis and granite. The pottery was fired at a temperature between uh, uh, 500 degrees and 900 degrees. The visual difference found in the clays is not a result of, the, of their composition, but instead of a fairing atmosphere with uh, a higher or lower uh, oxygen content. The abundance of phosphorus in one of the vessels might have due to, to shoot on its surface and carbonized residues uh, on its walls uh, are a result of the vessel being used, uh, although we, ha we have ruled out that this may be post-depositional, and this in indicator is, is much weaker in the rest of the pieces we analyze. If it were post-depositional, we would have detected it in a similar concentration in all of the pottery. We consider, consider that the characteristic of the deposit confirmed its regular purpose and that it was intentionally concealed. 
The choice uh, of the double tumulus seems to have com com came about as a result of a conscious action uh, carried out on, the, on an element that was important in space and in the territory in, the territory in general, as it has been reused uh, over many thousands of years. This landmark was deliber deliberately chosen perhaps because it corresponded to an exceptional type, type of design amongst Galician megalithic structures. This is not a waste pit. If it were a waste pit or a casual deposit, we would expect a greater vari variety of morph morphotypes, greater fragmentation and a more widely uh, dispersed and random spatial distribution. All of the features of the pottery confer its homoge homogeneity. At a, more, uh, at a more morphological, typological level, only broken by the vessels with handles, the decorated pieces that were chosen are red and exclude the pots, the, the clays are also similar. The variety is in the in the color of the surface, but not in the composition. The processes of mixing the temper are simple and from the same source areas. Homogeneity in the in the firing process with similar temperatures. The difference in color may may be due to the position of each piece in the kiln or because several kiln loads were fired. Search for rematerials in their nearby liturgical surroundings, which was well known, the people who deposited the offering knew the area in which they were operating well. The existence of medieval activity in Tumuli is known, uh, although it, it has not been documented to any extent in our region. However, the characteristic of this deposit may make it exceptional in Galicia. There, there can be no doubt that there is an urgent need to for, stud for study for medical archaeology to be set underway in our region, and in particular those oriented towards obtaining a more through understanding of the context in which pottery is documented. Uh, as this may help us to understand many different aspects of historical communities that are not dealt with in, with, uh, in the limited documentation. Thank you very much. Thank you.